Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 365. Um, I'm not sure if there's anybody um, uh, still uh, um, alive out there, but um, I suppose we've got some questions here that we, we must uh, answer them. With us tonight, uh, very much alive is uh, Tim Kepper. Tim is uh, CEO of onlineownership.com. He lives in Corby with Freddie. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, but Freddie is uh, a, a rescue dog. And Masataki Wasa is webmaster of um, uh, wasaweb.net. Um, he's also a Google product expert on the AdSense community. Tim is a Google product expert on the um, um, Google My Business uh, community. All right, we have uh, some questions tonight uh, carried on from last week. Uh, question one is uh, titled, um, Swedish characters uh, in meta tags. It's from Franco um oh phil um he said hi and as a new member i just wanted to first say thanks so much for setting up this amazing resource well franco is our friend now tim um i'm sure you'll agree anyway um my my question is that i am in the process of importing a lot of images to our new WordPress site, and I'm, I am importing the meta info, title, alt tags, and descriptions for the images too. Our site is a Swedish site, so we have some special characters uh, in our alphabet, which can be seen um, on our uh, um, group on Facebook, uh, Dumb SEO Questions. I have replaced these in the image file names with standard uh, uh, characters. Um, but I'm wondering if it is possible to have these characters uh, in the metadata. Uh, be grateful for any advice. Thanks. Am I the only one here? Uh -huh. So meta tags on the page, right? So the the file name used to have characters with diacritics, um, and then that's been imported. That's been changed to sort of, if you like, plain simple A's and O's. Um, but on the page, you want to have sort of the proper Swedish words, as it were, then that would make sense. So though I'm a little confused by the question, I'm not 100% sure whether I really got the question right. Hmm. Um, so there's yeah. a site that needs to be imported. The image files for web pages image files used to have file names the image files right not the web pages but the image files used to have um file names with those characters franco changed those to standard inverted commas characters um but is he asking about meta tags on the page relating to the page well, I, I, I think um, he, he wants. I to think he means to. What yeah, I think yeah. he's saying is he's probably got an English page and he's using Swedish in the meta tags. If it was the Swedish page, it would make sense. I mean, there was nothing wrong. But I think he's talking about using him in the English page. Or, oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, no, I thought I thought the site was in Swedish. Whole thing, I don't know. I'm getting confused. Uh, uh, maybe 
Well, if it was a Swedish site, his message text would be in Swedish. Maybe yeah. he... Uh, ah, maybe when he's looking at source, the labeling in the in the in the is actually in English and not in Swedish. Um, that's just thought. Ah. What you could do is, um, if you're using sort of like WordPress, you can ch you can change the language of your site um, by switching it to you check the language in the general settings. I think it is. That could be what he's inquiring about. Yeah. I don't, yeah, quite a few, quite a few different possibilities there. Okay. Yeah. I, I see Katerina Lujak uh, said my two cents go to Adriff Lang and regular letters Google will know. And in cases like this, usually Google does. Uh, know uh, what's going on yeah all right let's um call it an answer for number one and have a look at number two for tonight this one from sarah adams merging five different sites and brands into one he said um hi i'm working on a, a new website build that will be merging five different sites and brands into one there is a lot that is going into this, but I will be collaborating a bit on the sitemaps. We will have one global sitemap and then allow the ability for users to select topics and see a unique sitemap. What is the best way to use analytics to help uh, inform um, decisions uh, on how to organize this and what to display or group together? or other SEO tools, like looking at search visibility and what drives traffic, etc. I've been spending time in behavior flow reports and whatnot, but I was just curious what your preference was uh, when collaborating with designers on sitemaps for new sites, especially when there is consolidation involved. Okay, so she means navigation, not an actual site map. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I just read that in the in the uh, um, responses. Um, you said we just call it a site map here. What what is the the, the site map is is the navigation list? That what does that mean? Left hand menu or something like that? Yeah, I think that's what she's talking about. Um, so, wow, well, uh, okay, so, you know, this five different sites into one, whoa. Well, well, are they all the same? Like, do they cover the same topics? Um, because you won't need to to be, you know, what, if you're merging five sites, I think you need to identify what pages are the same in all. Because you're only going to want one page. You're not going to have five pages on the same thing. Um, but we don't know if they're all the same. Um, Um, I mean, the, it, there's kind of a, uh, a sort of a simple rule that, you know, you don't want um, pages which can't be gotten to within sort of three clicks, uh, three, you know. Um, but if it's going to be that mega, I don't think you'll be able to get around that one. Um, uh, you could do, depends on how you split out your topics. You know, the more topics you have, the easier people are going to be able to find that within sort of three clicks. Um, 
but then it could be a very big navigation layer. Um, the thing is, it still needs to be intuitive. Um, I would probably look at what people are finding now across all those three sites, uh, sorry, five sites within analytics, which is going to tell you also which is some of the more valuable um, <clears throat> which is some of the more valuable content, the content that those users on those five different sites are always looking for or visiting or trying to visit. And you want to make sure that those are clearly uh, and easy to navigate to and to find within the new site. Um, how about including a search functionality in the actual site, if it's going to be that big? Uh, um, one one big thing also is if this is going to be massive, how are you going to deal with it mobile-wise? Tim, thank you. Okay. Let's go to number three on our run list. This one is from Chris Green. Uh, changing the business-related photo on a search engine results page. Um, Chris Green said, hi, guys. We want to change the uh, Google My Business photo below um, with the logo of our business. In Google My Business, we have uploaded the logo and set it to logo, but it is not changed on the picture uh, on the search results. Uh, any on any ideas on how to do this or force it to change can't force it um google displays what they believe is the best uh the best thing based on the user's query um and also which they find is is the, the most helpful so like in in this instance you've got a medical center they're showing you outside of a medical center i'm assuming it's in a large block people are going to want to know kind of where it exactly is so that makes sense what you can do is actually retake that image and you know a better quality um but you can't force so um unfortunately there's no other way google displays it uh, depending on the search query what they feel is the best one um but so your only option there is to take a, a to take a really nice looking image, yeah, you know, a really high quality one um, of the exterior, and uh, you know, then at least you've got control over the images that Google is displaying in the best possible way that you you know. Yep. Thank you, Tim. All right. Uh was, um, what am I doing wrong here? There we are. Found the right button finally. Christian Mulbor. Um, he said, this is a website relaunch with so many things wrong. Um, he said, always, always thought that I knew a thing about SEO, maybe even more, but this case Boogles my mind. I posted it uh, in the group a few weeks ago. Um, the too long didn't read uh, section. Um, one website launch happened, a website relaunch happened. Uh, the whole site was available under three domains for a few weeks uh, before launch, before relaunch. Uh, brackets to duplicate content. Um, the main uh, TLDs uh, send uh, 301s as well as 302s um, to different domains, which I think is totally crazy, and I certainly agree with you, uh, Christian. Um, and even though all of this craziness, the search met metrics graph seems to be rising. Okay. 
Uh, I would expect way more through a relaunch, but to me, it seems like uh, do whatever you want, so we'll figure it out. So the question, am I missing something? This is a website relaunch uh, with so many things wrong, so many metrics that shouldn't look like they do. I don't get it. Well, <laughs> if... <laughs> Well, those other sites aren't going to be um, de-indexed. You know, those those things are going to still be uh, showing in the search results. When people click on it, then they're going to the new page, right? So you're still getting, you're still, it's still looking good, you know, from any uh, other thingamajig because it's still um, seeing those organic positions. But as soon as Google then starts revisiting pages, starts removing them, then trying to figure out which is the one I need to replace it with or which which page within this new site actually suits that query better, <laughs> then you'll probably start seeing some different things. But um, I would start trying to correct as much stuff as possible rather than waiting to see it all go tits up in two, three months' time, you know. Um, you know, Google Google always tries to understand what a site is doing. Um, and it, you know, it, it tries to understand and it tries to compensate for, for these things. But ultimately, it reaches a point when they just crawl it and and will eventually just treat it as 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 the new site and not take into consideration the other ones and what you tried to do. Um, and, and yeah, you know, and if there's big issues, um, then you'll probably start seeing things. However, having said that, I've seen some horrendous migrations where it stayed stable. Um, but ultimately, we've had to go in and really work on it and really fix it to actually start getting it to move in the in in, in, in or to perform better, which was the whole intention of when they decided to do a migration. So it stayed the same; it stayed you know stable, but it never made massive gains, which was the intention of the original migration. Until you go in and correct the other issues, then, you know, you hopefully have the other things. Thank you, Tim. All right, we, we have um, an easy uh, uh, question for you, uh, an easy question for you to, to finish up with tonight. Well, what's the best schema for real estate listings? And it's asked by Rodrigo Bueno. Um, and I see that uh, you answered it uh, on the, uh, um, the, the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group uh, through the week, mate. Um, what's the best one to use? Hang on. Uh, I've got to just check me out. Uh, I'll tell you now. <clears throat> So, obviously, your top line, because I think they were asking about property, weren't they? So, um, obviously, your top line is going to be real estate agent because then there isn't any other one. Um, and then um, for the property itself, for the property page itself, um, I used place, which I found works better. And for the price we used, uh, we used, or I used offer. Um, because within the, oh God, what was it? Within the destination, uh, not destination, within the, uh, I'm getting all confused here. Let me out, I'm gonna have to check out the schema quickly. Because within the one listed in schema for a property, you can't put a price in, as in offer. Um, 
And then also with um, but then you also can but it also works with um, if it's rented properties, the rent action works in the place structure, but it won't work in the at least when I tested. Um, so let me just quickly check what I think it's destination. It's All right. Uh, yeah, people were using product. No, no, no. People were using product, which doesn't really work. Um, I'm sure it was destination that I saw. Can't even find it now. It's so buried in this freaking scheme mm -hmm. at all. Um, yeah. No. Okay. Anyway, so to cut that to short, um, I used place which listed the actual location, et cetera, and I use an offer for, uh, an offer for the actual, to list the actual price of it. Um, uh, and that's that. Uh, there is another thing within, you know, you can also use property value, but I've, I've never used it, so I don't know in where it will nest. Um, and when it, when I say property value, it's not the actual like as in we're thinking of pro the value of a property. It's used um, for anything from you know the, uh, the from um, images um, of stuff or you know what what something was stuck like, uh, images what something was taken of, but it is still nested within the real estate thing. So, you know, there are a few things you can play with. The ones which I found worked best at the time um, was place um, where you use for the actual location and then your yeah, rent action for if, you, if it's a rental property. Excellent, Tim. All right, let's uh, let bring this to a halt um, uh, yet again. Although actually, I must say that we still still have other questions uh, which we are yet to answer. But um, we had uh, this bunch of questions tonight um, left over from last week um, because I wasn't a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, do you think, do you think we close up now? Um, or um, if there's a few, uh, we could do a couple more if you want. The, yeah, the, the, only, the only thing is that uh, I mean, we, we, we don't, um, I don't have, I no longer have the ability to, to add questions into our run list on the fly. Um, oh, okay. No worries. That, well, we can add to for next week. We, we can, we can do that next week. Let, let's hope uh, we're all still kicking, mate. Um, yeah, they're, they're, you, you went through the, um, I read on um, Facebook that uh, you went through the um, mad cow disease thing, or was it foot and mouth? Foot and mouth foot thing. And mouth. Yeah. Um, yeah.
Yeah, I didn't think I'd be going through this crisis again in my lifetime. But here we are. Yeah. Oh, well, let's hope um, we're still around in a year's time and um, we can... Uh... <laughs> anyway. Oh, boy. Sorry about this, guys. I'm, I'm going into meltdown. Um, okay, let's um, wrap it up. We, um, we'll be back at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again. Um, but for now, it's good night. Um, we must thank, uh, of course, Tim Kapper and Masataki Wasa um, for coming along and uh, answering all, all, all those questions. And also people like uh, Michael Martinez and um, Don Vermeer, um, people who have uh, you know, spent a good time uh, um, on the WCA Questions Facebook group and uh, answered um, some of those questions as they appear, um, making uh, the WCA Questions Facebook group such a, a valuable resource. All right, um, thank you for that. We'll be back uh, here at the, the same time, same place. Uh, but for now, it's um, good night.